The Singapore government has stepped in to stop the proposed deal between NTUC Income and German insurer Allianz. It's also introducing new measures to safeguard future deals that involve insurers with a social mission like income. Culture, Community and Youth Minister Edwin Tong, whose ministry oversees cooperatives, says the proposed transaction in its current form is not in the public's interest. He added that the government is not opposed to new arrangements income may wish to pursue. MCCY is not satisfied that income will be able to continue fulfilling its social mission after the proposed transaction. There are no clear binding provisions or structural protections in the deal to ensure that income's social mission will be discharged. In his speech, Mr Tong highlighted several milestones leading up to this decision. In 2022, income embarked on a corporatization exercise, citing its need for a strong capital base amid increasing global competition. As part of that, income had sought and obtained an exemption from MCCY to carry over a surplus of 2 billion Singapore dollars to the new corporate entity. This would have otherwise gone to benefit the co-op movement in Singapore as a whole. Now, the surplus will be relevant later. On 17th of July this year, Allianz announced it wanted to buy a majority stake in income insurance for around 1.6 billion US dollars. The deal was met with public outcry, even while it was pending regulatory approval. Now, former NTUC income leaders spoke out against the proposed acquisition, citing that income may not be able to fulfill its social mission if it were run by a for-profit entity. Now, MPs took to the issue to Parliament at a sitting on the 6th of August, raising concerns on whether income's insurance products will remain inclusive and accessible. The Monetary Authority of Singapore said then that there will be no change to the terms and conditions of existing contracts should the deal be approved. Which brings us to today. Now remember the surplus from corporatization? New information revealed that income would return some $1.85 billion to shareholders within three years after its acquisition. MCCY found that this ran counter to the reasons income was allowed to carry forward a surplus in the first place. Plus, there was no clear binding provision to ensure that income's social mission will be discharged. We had known earlier that the proposed transaction would leave NE as the minority shareholder in the new entity, with a minority of board positions and no ability to nominate the chairman of the new income entity. On their own, these factors would not have caused MCCY to object to the transaction. However, taken together with the proposed capital extraction and the lack of structural protections in the deal to ensure the continuation of income's social mission, cumulatively, they pose a risk that MCCY judges not to be acceptable. The government is also looking to amend the Insurance Act to consider MCCY's views in applications related to insurers that are either a co-op or linked to one. That is, as the government recognises that these entities are a specific category of insurers with a social mission. Now, currently, like in the case of the proposed deal to acquire income insurance, only MAS approval needs to be sought. MAS will typically consider a range of criteria such as financial strength and whether it is fit and proper on prudential grounds. The amendment will make MCCY stance a criteria and given that the income deal is still ongoing, the bill will be read for the second and third time this week on an urgent basis. There's urgency in tabling this bill because the deal is under consideration by the shareholders. And currently, there is no explicit provision in the Insurance Act for MAS to consider non-prudential related factors in assessing such applications. And so, this is why we need to come back, or we need to come to Parliament uh, with the proposed bill to give the Minister in charge of MAS the powers to be able to consider the views and the concerns of the Minister for MCCY on public interest grounds. Following the government's intervention and assurance for future deals, MPs from both sides of the House then raised questions on timing and its impact to policyholders. Aslam Shah with this report. 
Mr. More than 10 MPs sought clarifications on the decision to call off the proposed acquisition of income. Amongst the concerns, when the government knew of the capital extraction and whether parties were being transparent during the process. First, what was MAS's assessment of this plan? Second, was MCCY aware? Third, why didn't MAS share more information about the capital extraction with MCCY earlier? The information received by MAS to perform its regulatory functions is generally not shared with other government agencies. It was only after the 6 August Parliament sitting that the MAS team that was assessing this matter saw that incomes uh, or, or this plan to optimise the capital uh, could be relevant to MCCY's views on the proposed transaction. And that is when MAS then decided that there were grounds to share the information with MCCY. The need for more capital was the basis given to justify the corporatization of income and then again subsequently to justify the sale of income to Allianz, um, which is in direct contradiction with the plan to reduce capital. Um, this would, will any action be taken against those responsible for misleading the public and the government? The deal on its own was priced properly, appropriately, the terms were put up. And as I mentioned, even after the capital extraction, the financial viability, the capital adequacy requirements and ratios would be satisfied. That is the framework in which this was proceeded with. We have a different view of that for reasons which are not associated with the financial viability or sustainability of the proposal. So there's no misleading as far as this is concerned. As the government seeks to amend the current Insurance Act to provide greater safeguards, MPs asked if such intervention could block future deals and its impact to policy holders. What this means uh, for the reputation of MES as a reliable channel for government sentiment, uh, for potential future deals that uh, would require regulatory approval. MES takes its reputation, international reputation, very seriously. And this is the reason why we want to handle this matter in an uh, open and transparent manner, coming to Parliament to pass the amendments to the Insurance Act and to do so with urgency because the deal is under consideration by shareholders. Now that this deal will be halted, what does it mean for policyholders in the short to the long run? Will the terms of their policy that they are bought be safeguarded and should policy holders be concerned? The existing policy holders of income need not be concerned as MES will continue to regulate income as a licensee. Income has sufficient resources to meet the necessary capital adequacy ratio, which means it has enough capital to meet its liabilities and also to pay out to policyholders.